Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we are working on Grade 5, Module 1, Lesson 5. Tonight we are naming decimal fractions in expanded unit and word form by applying place value reasoning. That's a mouthful. Um, and you'll remember from fourth grade a lot of work with expressing numbers in expanded unit and word form. So we should be familiar with the concept here. Um, we should be doing a lot of that review work tonight. Okay, let's take a look at problem number one. We are asked to do the following. Express a, as decimal numerals. The first one is done for you. I see. So they say, well, what is five thousands? Ah, they do it over here. So, right, they have five in the thousandths column, right? And nothing in the, in the hundredths and nothing in the tenths column. So let's take a look at 1D. 1D is eight hundred and five thousands. Ah, okay. So 805 thousands, right, because when we read out our thousands, we often group those three place values, the tenths, the hundredths, and the thousands, and read that number, 805 thousands, just like we do on the left-hand side of the decimal when we look at, let's say, all the thousands. The hundred thousands, the ten thousands, and the one thousands, we often group those together and express them just as thousands. So on the right side, we express them as thousandths, 805 thousandths, okay, well that's just, let's see, 805 thousandths, right? That's 805 in the thousandths place. Awesome. Let's take a look at 1F. 1F asks us, what about this? 28 thousandths. Now, you might be tempted to say, hey, 28 thousandths, right? But look, 28, that's actually not in the thousands place, that's in the hundreds place, that's 28 hundredths. So I want to scratch that off and say 28 thousandths. Let's see, so that would be more like that, right? 28 thousandths, that's 28 in the thousandths place, that third place to the right of the decimal. Awesome. Let's take a look at problem number two. Now here I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, <laughs> of deception because as you know from watching me write on these screens, for low these many years, uh, it's not pretty. So let's express each of the following in words. I'm going to express this in words without ever writing it down because, you, frankly, it's just going to be uh, Ill Ill <laughs> it's going to be illegible. So this is, I would say, on the left hand side of the decimal, I say this is 607. That's probably the easiest part, right? So I would say this is 607 and 409 thousandths, right? So 607 describes everything here and 409 thousandths describes everything to the right side of the decimal. And if you write that all out here in handwriting much better than mine, you'll have your answer. Awesome. Let's take a look finally at number four. Number four is write a decimal for each of the following. Use a place value chart to help if necessary. You know what? I'm going to scratch in a little place value chart here quickly. I'm going to do a place value chart that has a decimal here. Let's see. We've got tenths, hundredths, thousandths, here we've got ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. And we go on from there, right? And I'm going to do that place value because I think it's going to help us to lay this one out. Let's see. So this one is in uh, expanded form. So let's see. We have five copies of a thousand. All right. So that's five copies of a thousand, right? We have four copies of a hundred. Four copies of a hundred. We have eight copies of one, and so you might just, oop, that's not right, right? That's in the tens, tens place. This is eight copies of one right there. So eight copies of one. And we have, let's see, oh, six copies of a hundredth. So there doesn't look like there's anything in the tenths place, but six copies of a hundredth, those right there. And then finally, five copies of a thousandth. 5 goes right there. So that means that there are no 10s, right? As I scan this number, I don't see any copies of 10, and I don't see any copies of a 10th. So now we've got our number. Our number is 5,408 and 65 thousands. Awesome. So this is one of those cases where when they are missing units, like no 10s in here and no 10ths in here, it gets really tricky to make sure that your number is spaced out exactly the way it should be. It is very common in doing a problem like this that I would end up seeing an answer like this. 5, 4, 8.65, right? 
five copies of something, four copies of something, eight copies of something, six copies of something, and five copies of something. And that's not even close to the right answer, right? This is not five hundreds, it's five thousands. This is not four tens, it's four hundreds, et cetera, et cetera. So we've lost all those missing pieces, those, the fact that there are no tens and no tenths. And if we lay it out in a place value chart, this becomes much more straightforward. So if you're confused and you're thinking, hey, I think I'm missing something, take the time to put out a quick rudimentary place value chart, and then you'll get to your answer. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.